Hi everyone, welcome back to this ongoing series where we use Rust to make generative art. In this episode, we'll be using the new framework layout to create a swirling vortex of color. We will be using the rand crate to add some interesting effects to our vortex. However, an overview of the theory is displayed on this slide. We will create some random circular roots for circles of random size and with a slight variation in their center points. Each circle will also be created with a random color. All of these together will create a vortex effect. Most of the code will be going into user.rs, but first we update the constants in main.rs, changing the number of frames to 240 and the number of repetitions to 10. Next, we move over to user.rs and create a new constant called numVortices of type u32 and value 40. Then we will create a struct called location, which will take a type t as an argument, with attributes of x and y, which will also be of type t. After this, we create a struct to hold the values for each swirl of the vortex, called a vortex point. The first attribute will be called center and is of type location with a subtype of U32. Then we will add an attribute called color of type RGB with a subtype of U8 and an attribute of rotation as an F32 and then the size of the square as a U32 and the width of the circle also as a U32. Then we update the state struct to include the vortices attribute, which will be a vector of type vortex point. Then we create a local vector called vortices. This needs to be mutable, and we initialize this by calling vec new. Next up, we create a variable called center, which is of type location, with the x being set to the width over 2 and the y to the height over 2, the center point of the image. After this, we create our random number generator, called RNG, by calling the rand crate and thread RNG. Next, we're going to loop through the numbers from 0 to the number of vertices, the constant we created above. First thing we do inside the loop is calculate a random x difference of type I32 between minus 10 and 10. And we do the same thing for diff y, to get some variation for the y component. Next, we create the components for the color of the vortex point, starting with red, a random value between 55 and 255. Then the same thing for the green component, fixing a mistake in the line above, using a single dot instead of two to indicate a range. And finally, the blue component. Then we pick a random rotation between zero and two times pi, the total number of radians in a circle. Then a random circle size of type U32 between 40 and 200. And we create a variable called NXT or next and create an instance of vortex point. The center will be a location with the X value derived from the center point of the image plus a random shift between minus 10 and 10. We have to convert to I32 for the negative component to be preserved and then back to U32 for the location object. The Y component is similarly calculated. Then we set the color by referencing the randomly generated red, green, and blue values we created above. The rotation is simply the rot value we calculated above. The size of the square is hard coded to five, but could be any value, even randomly generated. And the width is simply the circle size calculated above. Then we push the newly created vortex point into the vector of vortices by calling push on it. After the loop, we've created our vortex points, but we need to store them in the state object before returning them. So we modify the code that was there before, adding vortices to the object. Now we need to update the render frame function, which we start by calculating the frame fraction radian by multiplying the frame fraction by two times pi. And now we loop through every vortex point by calling iter mute on the vector stored in the state. Then we calculate the half size for this block by dividing the vortex point size by 2. Then we create a loop for x in the range 0 to vp.size and inside this loop we create another for y, also from 0 to vp.size. Next we calculate the center x position for this vortex point by combining the different components, again casting to i32 to not lose any information from any negative numbers that might have been generated. Next. 
We calculate the rotational point for the X component by starting from frame fraction radians, then adding the offset, which we had called rotation, and then taking the sine of this. Then we calculate the X position, called pos X, by adding the center point to the rotation multiplied by the size of the circle. We called this width. The y component equivalent is almost exactly the same, but we take the cosine of the calculated angle rather than the sine, and use the y component equivalents for the center point. Before we draw the pixel to the image, we do a safety check to make sure that the pixel location is in the bounds of the image, checking both the x and y components are greater than zero and less than the width and height respectively. Then we call frame.putPixel, passing in the x pos and y pos, making sure to cast them as u32, and then the color, which is stored in the vortex point. Then we call run underscore build dot sh, or run cargo run. And we can see we have an error. We made the same mistake again as earlier, but we didn't catch it this time. The blue component in the setup is missing a dot to make it a range, so we correct this. And we rerun the build script. This will likely take at least a few minutes to complete. And when it's finished, we can click on the GIF and see that it has generated as expected. And we can also review the MP4 video to make sure that has also completed, which we can see it has. And there you have it. We've managed to create a swirling vortex of color, adding some randomness to it and getting some interesting results back out. I encourage you to play around with the different constants or ranges to see what you can come up with. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to keep up to date when the next one comes out, then please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to reply as quickly as I can to all the comments on this channel. For now though, I wish you a good day. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.